Loom's computer. All right. Hey guys, this is Joette with LoomCoach.com and today is April 9th, 2020 and we are in the middle of a pandemic thanks to the coronavirus. And um, one of the interesting things that's been going on is that many balloon professionals around the world are on stay at home orders. And um, so we went from having it being a busy time of the year in Florida where we typically would be doing a ton of conventions in Orlando. We would be doing many um, awards banquets for end of the year for schools, for all the different sports teams. We would be hosting graduation parties birthdays and all the other celebrations and instead people are told to stay at home not be in groups outside of your family and that has made a screeching halt for the balloon industry so my goal really has quite an impact yeah we have definitely been impacted um so my goal during this time is to be a ray of sunshine for those of you who are having some depression or some uncertainty um, and it's valid. Here's the thing. It is super valid no matter how you're feeling. You might be waking up every morning refreshed, renewed, and ready to go. You might be waking up not wanting to get out of bed and just wanting to stay in your pajamas, roll up in a ball, and cry because of the lost income. No matter what level you're at, or you might be somewhere in between, I want you to know that number one, it's okay to have those thoughts and feelings, okay? So wherever you're at, acknowledge it. I'm going to just throw out to you that I highly encourage you to keep a journal paper. I am journaling this every morning. I wake up and I have a journal that gives me a positive quote that I love. Um, but even if you don't have that, just a notebook, spiral notebook, pieces of scrap paper stapled together, whatever you need. But I want you during this time to write down your thoughts and feelings. And I encourage you to have some gratitude in the morning, <laughs> things that you're thankful for, and then to think about what it is you want to do moving forward. So if you're one of those people that wants to make most of this time, even if you're not being able to deliver balloons and you're able to work on your business or on your life goals, that's what this is for. So I want to let you know, I am here to help you to take action and thrive even in the middle of this crisis. The other thing I wanna let you guys know is that I practice what I preach. And that is the fact that I do get up every morning by 7.30, I go for a walk and watch sunrise happen. I um, find out that that's a positive influence because now my daughter's actually doing it with me too now because she's taking her phlebotomy. Okay, phlebotomy guys, it's something where you have to stab <laughs> people in the arm to take their blood. That's kind of a hands-on class you gotta take the labs for. <laughs> but she's actually doing her phlebotomy class online with her instructor. In fact, she just did a test today. So I understand wow. people have to pivot and do things differently. My husband's a sixth grade teacher. He's teaching from the living room couch right now. So I totally understand about our lives being turned upside down. But what I'm letting you know that is in the middle of that and me not being able to be at the store at party people events where we just opened a brand new shop. Dave got to come to our grand opening. Um, he and Tommy were at that event supporting us as local partners here in Lakeland. And, um, you know, I'm bummed. Yes, I'd much rather be there and having our business go, but I'm making the most of this time. So I just wanted to share a little bit of that information before we dig into the tech, because I want you guys to understand that I know where you're at. And um, if you're going through some depression, if you're going through some uncertainty and you need extra support and help, send me a private message, email me joette at ballooncoach.com and I'll be glad to hang out and do a chat with you one-to-one -one and have some phone calls because I want to help you going forward and just surviving through this and not just surviving this, but thriving during it. So today's free webinar is with Dave Kramer. This is Dave, wave Dave. <laughs> Dave is with All Pro Web Tools. He is based here in Lakeland, Florida, and I was very blessed to meet him a couple of years ago when he moved from Colorado to Lakeland. I am a part of a networking group called Lakeland Business Leaders, and now it's called Bridge, where they're bridging local businesses to other people into the community. And through that, I got to find out that there's this really awesome tech that he offers to people to help them organize their systems as small business owners. And what I love about Dave is that he really listens and that even though he talks tech, he also can talk to the small <laughs> business owner because he's dealt with so many of them. 
So I'm multilingual. Multilingual, I love it. And <laughs> um, for those of you who know me, I am definitely tech challenged. I'm one of those people that when Dave and I are doing a screen share, you know, he tells me exactly where to go and then there's a delay and then he'll tell me again exactly where <laughs> my mouse needs to go. Um, because, hey guys, I turned 50 this year, so I'll be honest, I was not born with a cell phone in my hand. Tech does take me a little bit more time. So um, I want to just make sure that you guys know that um, no matter where you are on the curve as far as using technology, what I appreciate about Dave is he's not here to sell you his tool. Yes, if you'd like to buy his tool, you're more than welcome to do that and he'll set up consultation with you guys. But what he's gonna be here today is to be my support and to show you how his tools can help you out, whether you're using his tools or any other technology to help you have a good process. So today we're talking about doing a checklist to review, review your current sales process um, tips to improve your sales system. And then by doing this, it's going to increase your efficiency and your customer service. So number one, for all of those guys who are on right now with us, I love it. We've got people from New York, um, Pittsburgh, Louisiana, California. So we've got people here from coast to coast, Alabama. Welcome, welcome, welcome. The first thing I'd like you guys to do is in the chat box, I want you to type right now, yes, or no, okay? And the question I'm gonna ask yes or no to is do you currently have a contact form on your website? So one of the things that right now Party People's doing over this time is we're making a new website. So in about another week, this will not be our website anymore, <laughs> all right? Our contact form will be going to all pro web tools and a new form will be created soon that will be on our website and a whole new look. But for now, I'm going with what we've got. So many people are telling me, no, they do not have a contact form currently on their website. All right, and then several people say yes. So here's the first thing. If you have a website, I encourage you to have a contact form because that contact form saves you time from having to collect all these details from a client. So on your yep. contact form, what I want you to do is review it and make sure it has all the information you need. And as I go through this one, Dave, feel free to jump in if there's something that you see that we're currently missing that you think would be important for people to have. So yeah, one, one question I would pose to everybody um, on the call today is if you do have a contact form, can you also uh, put into the comments if the data from that form goes as an email to you? Because now that it's in an email, you still have to copy and paste the person's name, the person's phone number, the person's address into some other system in order to uh, process an order for them or an invoice. So cool. um, if you're sending the data straight to an email, there's a much better way of doing it. Cool. So the question is right now with your contact form, if you have one, does it send you an email or does it go into a customer management system? So I would love for you guys to write that down that you're either going to write email or customer management system. And yes, if you do not have a website yet, you definitely want to get a website. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> so as we look at our contact form that you currently have, are you collecting their first name and last name? Are you getting their email address? Are you getting their phone number? Are you asking them for their event date? Are you asking them about the colors and themes of the event that they're having? Are you asking them their budget? And here's the thing, so many people tell me that they're afraid when they're on the phone or on a contact form to ask budget. And here's the thing, if you don't ask, you're not gonna get the information you need. And by having this budget of 100 to 299, and now that we have the store, we actually can have another one that's less than that because we do have the option for people to come to our store and pick up things or for us just to do a small delivery now within the delivery area of our storefront. But by people seeing this number and that over $1,000, some people may not know that that's even a possibility to spend over $1,000. 
I know other balloon companies that they'll actually put the names of events that they've got up on their website and they'll go like, if you want to be like Coca-Cola, 3,000 to 5,000. If you want to be like Donut King's Grand Opening, 5,000 to 8,000. So some people even give the specifics of, hey, these events that you see on my website are these price ranges. So people know that. So um, I encourage you to ask this up front because it helps get people start thinking about money. Also though, know that just because they put on their contact form 100 to 300, that doesn't mean that that's all that they have to spend. After you talk to them, they may end up increasing that budget, but at least gives you a starting point of what they're thinking. Um, we put on if other, what is the budget? And that way somebody could say, oh yeah, we only have 50 bucks. Or they could from the grip go say, hey, Joette, I have $10,000 for this event and I want you to make it amazing. And now they're communicating that to me up front so that I know what information to send back. Event location name, event street address, event city, state, and zip. We are super specific on this. Why? Because in the world of the internet, here's what happens. I get calls often from California or New York. Hey, mm -hmm. I love that graduation cap that you mm -hmm. did with the foam and the um, foil picking papers and the glitter on it. I want one of those. And I'm like, oh, that sounds great. Where is your event going to be at? And they're like, they'll say the name of the venue or whatever. I'm like, yeah, I'm not really sure where that's at. And then I've gone down and drilled down to the state. And they're like, oh, we're in California. And I'm like, oh, awesome. I have friends in California that can do that for you. Let me refer to you because I'm actually in Florida. So how do I know that this is important to put that there? I used to not ask. And I would waste all this time putting a quote together for a party that I thought, oh, yeah, this is going to be like a $400 party. And it was in the wrong state. So ask these questions up front so you're not wasting time. Is the event going to be inside, outside, or both? This is super important so that you know you're quoting the right type of decor. And then um, we also gig out entertainers. So we ask these other things. Do you need these other services? And then how did you hear about us? We have put Facebook, website, Instagram, and referral. And then we even put, if you're a referral, if you're one of these, Party People Events, Jonathan Gerber has purchased five different companies. So sometimes when people get to the Party People Events website, they're actually being forwarded from a different website from another company that he had purchased. So sometimes we're asking if they came from there. But some people will ask, like, did you come from a referral from the chamber? Or, you know, is there another customer that referred you to us? And then that allows me to send a thank you to that referral partner and also to let me know what's working. If you're doing Facebook ads, if you're doing a lot of promotions on Instagram, knowing where that lead comes from lets you know what's going on. Oh, yay. Annette is here from Germany. I love it when people are here worldwide. That's awesome. So Dave, as we went through that contact form, is there anything that stood out to you that we're missing at party people? Well, the first thing that really um, struck me was they've done studies and they found that the more things you ask for from somebody in a web form, um, statistically less people will fill out the form. So uh -huh. let's say for instance, you have two or three questions in your web form. You're going to have a lot more people fill out that form with only three questions on it than if you have something that's really long with a lot of questions. But obviously everything you've said, I completely agree with you want to get as much information from the client as possible so that you can properly route that lead. Right? Yes. So how do you accomplish that with just three fields? Let me tell you, you can do something called lead form chaining. So think of a chain and think and take those top three questions that you're asking their name and their phone number and their email, which are the critical pieces of information that you want. And you just have that on the first page, the first web form. Okay, and what, they, were those uh, three, what were the three questions? Their name, their email, and their phone number. Okay. And so when your prospect looks at that page, and you know how busy everybody is these days, they look at those three fields, they go, oh, I can fill that out. One, two, three, and they hit the submit button. Now you have the critical information to reach back out to them. 
But when they hit that submit button, what they do is they go to another form that says, great, thank you. We have a couple of extra questions for you. And you ask them a few more things to qualify them. And at the bottom of that page is another submit button. And that information that they submit on the second form gets added to the information from the first form so that you have everything in one place. And now you can have it go to a third page with a final, here's the last set of stuff that we'd like to know from you. But here's the thing, you set up these forms so that the most critical information that you need is the first form. The secondary information that you can use is the second form. And if they don't even get to the third form, if they give up and they go, you know what? I don't know what my budget is right now. I don't want to fill that out. I'm too busy. At least you still have the prospect's name, phone number, and email so that you can personally reach out to them and say, hey, I noticed that you were interested in putting a party together, um, but you weren't able to get all the way through the questions here. Um, tell me a little bit more about your party. And what you'll find when you do that is you'll get a number, uh, a lot more leads coming into the system than you would if you had a really long form. Wow, that's awesome. So basically what I hear you saying is with our new contact form, we can set it up where we're doing those first three questions and then chain it to those other things so that all goes into the process. And then at the end, it's in our CRM that it gives us all that data that we need to then be able to have our office manager follow up with the client. Yep, and as a matter of fact, Jonathan has already start, started putting that three-step uh, form together. Uh, so he's gonna be launching that just in a few days. Yay! So what I knew is that we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and so what I wanted to show people is that, hey, here's the information that you have to gather and that you've got to get from your clients, right? And this is where most people currently look or some people just have like one thing on it to get their email address. So what I love is being able to see the transition that we're going from, from what we've had set up for six years to being able to do things in a new fresh way. So it's exciting that during this downtime, we're actually finally being able to do this process because Jonathan Gerber in the past has just not had the bandwidth when we've got a crew of you know, eight working all the time doing events, there just wasn't that time for him to sit down and make this happen. So this is the time for you to make this happen. If you're not out running your business, I encourage you to work on it now and get it set. Um, uh, I can I can attest to that. We've had a number of people call us just in the past week or two saying, well, I have all this downtime. I'm, it's time for me to get organized and get all my systems in place. So we've been pretty overloaded by people the last few weeks. It's good to see business owners taking this time to be productive, because if you really think about it, if you can condense your systems and get more efficient now, when the, up, the inevitable upswing happens, when businesses start booming again, you're gonna have so much business and so many leads, if you're not efficient, you could potentially lose some of those leads. So it's important to uh, have your systems in place so you can capture as much and also let your staff know exactly how you want things processed through that system so that everything is efficient and smooth and you can you can collect all that revenue from all those that business that's going to come later this year yes i love it so cool 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 so what i want to do is i want to let this be as interactive as possible and so for those of you who are on with us live is do you have any questions about what was just said as far as collecting information through a contact form and the possibility of setting it up in a different way so that it's in stages? Because um, I'd like to answer those questions before we move on. And then Dave, what I would love to do is, is there a way for you to show us kind of how that actually would work? Yeah, um, it, it's pretty simple. Okay, um, cool. And then while we're waiting for people to post in the comments there, the other thing I would mention when you're doing the three-step forms, um, I noticed Rachel said that if she starts to fill out a form and it's too long, she quits. And that's something we've seen very often. Um, and what that is, is um, if you make it the easy button, right? Think about staples with the easy button. Um, when the first form is just simply your name and your phone number and email, everybody knows the answers to those questions. So it's easy and they don't really have to think about it. The second form might ask them a few more things, but I typically wouldn't recommend putting fill in boxes where they have to type a lot of words because that requires thought. So the second page would typically be more drop downs, bullet points, um, you know, and selection type questions. 
And then if you have those things where you want them to actually write something out to you, I would usually put all those on the third form um, because that takes a little bit more thought from them. Very cool. All right, so Shauna is asking if uh, this is something that they can do or that we need to hire someone. And if they're hiring somebody to do the three forms, what does that pricing look like? Yeah, you shouldn't have to hire anybody to do that. Um, even if, and I saw somebody else is talking about Google Forms. So this, this concept should be possible with just about any software that you're using that will allow you to do lead forms because all you're doing is you're making the thank you page of the first form actually just be another form. And then the thank you page of the second form is actually the third form. Uh, so most systems are going to support that. What I'm not sure about with most systems is if they're going to automatically combine the data from all three for you into one email to you or one CRM in integration that's going to add all that information. I'm sure there's some systems that'll do it. I know our system does it, um, but there might be some systems that don't do that. So one of the things that I'm just going to throw out there to people is that over the years in the balloon industry, um, many people that I am um, inspired by and love to see their business systems have customer management systems. It is something that I wish I would have had if I would have known about them back when I owned the company, I would have. So a customer management system is a place for all of your information to be stored of all your customers' names, their phone number, their email address, all the information about them so that you can easily send them targeted emails or that you can follow up with them. So Dave does have a program, it's called All Pro Web Tools. And at the last event that I did in Orlando in November, um, I've had over 60 of the people who were at that event go through training with Dave and hang out so that they can do their invoicing and their customer management through his program. The things that people have told me that they love about Dave's program is number one, it's low cost. Number two, there is a ex wonderful team of people, he and Tommy, um, that are actually helping do training and response with them and help people know what they're doing. Where sometimes when you're working with other management programs like Dubsado, 17 Hats, um, people often feel like they're lost in the crowd and they're not being able to contact people. So again, if you already have 17 hats or you have Dubsado or some other customer management system, you can still use these tools like he said and use their lead forms and turn that thank you into the follow-up. But um, if you don't have a system and you would like to check out all pro web tools, I'd encourage you to do that. Again, he's not like the information he's giving you can work in any of those systems. So people are always just asking me where I can turn to. So I want to make sure you guys know that. So Dave, you're on to show us how to make the magic work. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm going to share screen. And I'm going to stop my video for a minute just so I'm not distracting. Okay. Hey, I think it worked. All right. So um, this would be the page where you create the form. So I'm just naming it form one. And I can set it up to um, go to a thank you page. So I'm calling that the sign up thank you page. And then over here on the right, I have all of the information that I want to ask from the customer. So being that this is form one, I've got it set up with name, email, and I'm going to select phone number. And that's all I'm going to do for this form. So I'm going to go ahead and save that form. And now I'm going to create the second sign up box. Right there. So I've got form one down here. I'm going to add a new one here, create new box. And this is going to be form two. Whoops. All right. Now on this form, I don't need their name and email because I already got it on the first form. So I'm going to skip those. And on this one, I want to know what their favorite flower is and their favorite plant and their birthday. And over here where it says form chain, I'm going to set this to yes. That lets the system know that this is going to, we're gonna take all the information that's collected from this form and add it to the information that was collected from the first form. So I'm gonna select yes there. And then here again, I can select my thank you page, which is going to route them over to the third form. So now I'm going to hit save on form two. 
And now I'm going to go back and create the third form, sign up boxes. So down here, you can see I have form one and I have form two. I'm going to click create new box at the top. And here is form three. And now in form three, I've already got their favorite flower and their favorite plant. But now I want to know how many years they've been gardening and their anniversary month. And I'm also going to ask them to add comments. Uh, so this is going to be a type in field where they can write a bunch of words to me. And then here where it says form chain, I'm going to go ahead and say yes, because this is the third in the chain that's being sent out. So it's going to ask for this additional information. I need to remember to turn off the name and email because I already got that on the first form. Now, being that this is the last form of the series, now, if I want to automatically send them an email thanking them for filling out the third form and subscribing them to some kind of an email drip, that's where I can pick the campaign that's going to be automatically signed to them and start sending to them. So I'm going to uh, put that to the flower show campaign. And I can also tag them as interested in a certain thing so that I can follow up with them later, uh, either through a phone call or a text message or email or however I want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And as we said, you should be able to do this with any software system and you don't need to use all pro web tools, but all pro web tools can certainly do this for you. Um, also, there's an integration from this to WordPress. So if you have a WordPress website, you can install the plugin so that it will have access to these web forms. So you create all the web forms here and they're automatically gonna update on your WordPress website. So now that I've got that done, um, I would be able to go to the website. Let's see what pages. So now I need, I've got the web forms created. I'm going to put them on web pages. So I'm going to name the web pages the same thing. Form one, create the page. And right here where it says widgets, I will find the sign up box. And that one's gonna be sign up box number 10. I'm gonna save that. make sure I got that number correct. Yeah, so form one is 10, form two is 11 and three. So go to set up the other pages. Form two, that's gonna be number 11. And like we said, this is all stuff you can do yourself. And there's also video tutorials online that'll walk you through this entire process. So if you forget what I'm showing you here, you can always go watch a video. All right, so we have the web page form two. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and that's gonna let me see what that web form looks like. So this was the second one. And if we look at what the first one was, be right here. All right. So here's form one. We've got the name, email, and phone. And then once we hit submit, it will take them on to form two, which will ask for the favorite flower, favorite plant, and the birthday. And now we just need to build a form three. Form three. And that one's going to use that ID number 12 for the sign up box. So we'll go here to widgets, go to sign up boxes, and we'll put in sign up box number 12. Save it. And now we'll go look at form three. We get form two back here. All right, so now we can see here's form one, ask for the name, email, and phone, form two, favorite flower, favorite plant, and the birthday, 
And then form three asks them for their years in gardening, their anniversary month, and then they can type in their comments. So now when they hit submit, it'll say, thank you, your information's been submitted, we'll be following up with you shortly. That's really how simple it is. So now I'm gonna take a look at the chat to see if there are any questions that had come up. And as you guys can see, you know, he was doing it as if you were a florist shop, right? <laughs> so you can put any of the questions that you want into any of those boxes that you need. Um, one of the thing is, um, Shauna was talking about a program that's called Manager Sal. He is an entertainer who has a program that they use on their phones um, to um, do their customer management. And I'm not sure how Todd sets it up. So I would um, definitely, um, talk to Todd and see if that's something that you guys can change up or not. And then um, with allprowebtools.com, when you go to that, um, you're able to set up that you, you know, want a tour of it and um, schedule an appointment to look at that if that's something that you're needing a customer management system if you currently don't have one. Yes, and actually the flower shop I'm logged into right here is our public demo. So anyone can can log into this without having an account just to play around with it, just to see how it works. So uh, if you log into it right now, you'll be able to see exactly the system that I have created here because you'll be logged into the same account. And you can do that right from our website. It'll say uh, get started now and it'll take you right to the demo. Very cool. So guys, do you have any other questions about how to go through your sales system to make things more efficient before I talk about just the um, client follow-up and being able to be on the phone with people outside of the computer system. So before we move away from the customer management um, side of it, as far as the intake goes, um, are there any other questions you have before we move on from that point? You know, while we're waiting for some questions that come in, uh, the other part that we didn't go over was how you capture that data that comes in. So that would come into your leads. So if you were to look here, you'll see that this person has filled out this lead box. So you'll see when they filled it out and you'll see all the information right there. And like we said, there's a campaign to send the email drip out right away. So you'll, you'll have that with just about any software. But then if you click on the customer's name, this would be like your leads for the day. Um, so you come in here and you'll see their name, their email address, and any of those fields that they filled out. So when you call them, you're much more ready to talk to them about their particular situation because you've got everything right there in front of you. And then the other thing we really suggest with everybody, especially if you have a team of people working in your company, you're not sure who's responding to which leads or who talked to who, is to always put notes into your CRM um, which should automatically tag the person that wrote the note. Um, this is where you'd put information like talk to Bert. Uh, he was really friendly and he's really excited because this is going to be a big event and he would like some additional information on this. So I'm researching that and I'll get back to him on Tuesday. Having all that information in one place that your whole team can see makes your company way more efficient. That's awesome. I love it. So here's the thing that I encourage people to do is if you're one of those that you're like, I'm never sure who I contacted, when I contacted them, who, I think I've missed out on some of my leads that have messaged me, but I haven't gotten back with them. I'm not sure. If you struggle with having a system, I encourage you to have a customer management system so that you can see where they are in the process. And for party people events, I'm super excited about this because we do, we have an office manager who works from home in Orlando. Then we've got our team in um, Auburndale where it's Jonathan and our crew leader working in the office. And usually the three of them are the main ones, but we also have two other people who get into the system also. So now it's really exciting that we're gonna have this process to be able to see who's doing what and when that handoff happens to know that somebody else is taking care of the customer. Like for me, I'll go out to marketing events and somebody will ask for something and then I'll send an email out and I've always wondered like, okay, has Ginger responded to the client or did Jonathan do what he was supposed to do? As a marketing manager, I kind of worry, like I've handed this off, but has it been taken care of? And now right. with the way Dave has us set up, we're able to look inside the workflow and see what's going on, which is exciting. Yeah, um, and even when you're in the field talking to somebody with the, the app on your phone, you can put in their information right there on the spot and immediately task it to someone in your team. Instead of sending an email, you just send a task 
and then everybody can see that that person's being followed up with. So um, this is one of those things that if I would have known, and if they had them mm -hmm. back in 2003, I would have absolutely changed the way my business was because I would have been much more organized. The next part of the checklist that I wanna go through with you is now that you've got somebody who's come in, you know that you need to get them a quote, what systems do you have in place to be able to efficiently get a quote to them? So do you have a basic pricing guide that you have set up that you know how much your arches, your columns, your bouquets, and basic centerpiece cost? If you have not created that yet, I encourage you to use this time now to create that document. And it can be a simple clip, up, clip art document, or it can be something where you just take your current actual photos and put the pricing with it but have some type of PDF that you can easily send to those price shoppers <laughs> that when you talk to somebody, they're like, they won't even give me the date of their event. You know, you don't need to waste your time with them if they don't want to give you information and talk to them, but you can send them the basic PDF and then you're, you can move on. The next part of that is when you tell someone that I'm going to get a quote to you within 24 hours, then you need to get a quote to them within 24 hours. So whatever automated emails you set up or whatever conversations that you have with people, make sure in that process that you can over deliver. So I would, I've always heard under promise and over deliver, right? So I'd rather tell somebody that you'll have a quote to me, like if you're there quoting something a year from now, that's not gonna be my top priority, right? I'm gonna let people know, hey, it's a busy week, but I promise by noon on Friday, you'll have a quote in your inbox. So then I need to have a note, which you can do in his CRM system, is you can put follow up by noon on Friday so that you remind yourself that you need to do that follow up. And then when you send that email to the person, make sure that if you don't hear back from them, that you have a system to possibly call them because I can't tell you how many times people have sent me emails and they go in my junk box. Even my team from Party People Events, I'll be like, Jonathan, you haven't responded to me in a week. And he's like, yeah, I did like 15. I think Dave mm -hmm. even did this the other day. I'm like, Dave, dude, like, is this okay? Can you do this webinar? He's like, I, you know, I sent it to you 15 minutes after you did the email. And I'm like, what? It had gone to my junk box. So sometimes we forget that people have junk boxes and I sometimes we forget that people are super busy just like us and just yeah. because they didn't respond to your email it doesn't mean no it means they didn't read the email they didn't get the email or they haven't had time to respond so sometimes picking up the phone hey it's Joe out with party people events I sent you a quote yesterday at noon I just wanted to make sure that my email didn't end up in your spam box do you have a minute to go look at it then let them pull it up and go, okay, so, you know, and do not set up the price objections for yourself. So many times in our head, we're already thinking that we're fearful that we just sent them a quote for $950. And, oh my gosh, I'd never spend $950 on balloons. Get that out of your head and just be like, hey, this is Joanne. I'm so excited. I can't wait to make Susie's Sweet 16 look amazing. Wanted to make sure you got the quote. Go over it with them real quick and then get the yes. So now the question is in your customer system, are you set to take payment now? When you're sending out that quote, are you giving them a deadline? This quote is good through midnight on Friday. If you want this delivery to happen on the 15th, payment must be received by this time, this date. Are you giving them those parameters that they need to be able to respond to you? So many times people are just fearful to ask for the sale. Our clients need that clear, concise, this is your time frame, this is how you do it, and then they need a link to pay. So is it set up for you to be able to give them the price efficiently? Is there a way for them to pay you easily and do they know what their next step is? And then after you've gotten their money, do you send them a thank you card? Thank you. We look forward to servicing you on this date at this time. We'll be there. And then after you do the event, do you have another thing that's like, here's a picture of your event. It was great. We can't wait to work with you in the future. And now do you set something up 
to be able to contact them if it's a birthday party or if it's a corporate event that handles goes annually do you have a system in place to follow up and book them for the next year that is part of consistent customer service is that you have a full process that you go through and that you're always closing the sale thanking for the sale and then preparing for the next sale and having a customer management system allows you to be able to follow up with people more efficiently and then also be able to send out a newsletter later on that says hey we're in the middle of this pandemic i know that you're stuck home with your kids here's some fun free activities that your kids can do just as a drip just to be a cool person that they're in your um, customer base and you just want to check in with them and see how they're doing through this pandemic and the stay at home orders by having it all in one place where you can send out those emails, it just makes life easier for you to stay in contact with those customers. So, right, because you've got different leads at different stages through the purchasing process. So it's hard to track, you know, I've got five people that just requested a proposal and I've got six other people who just contacted me for the first time and I've got eight other people who are, we're just waiting for payment for their deposit. So how do you keep track of all that? Yeah, and I used to be horrible at it. I would have paper folders that you tried to put things in the right place and it was just everywhere. Right. So yeah, um, yeah I, I know I remember those days really way too well. So I encourage you all to put some type of system in place. Um, so Tabitha is asking, do you require 50% or 100%? So many of the balloon professionals I know around the world, they require 100% up front before they will book the event. I know other people will do a 50% and instead of saying it's a deposit because deposits are refundable, it's all in the text, um, you want to um, take a um, the first payment to be able to um, hold that date for them and to order in the supplies. So for me, my policy was always that I got at least 50% up front and that final payment was due two weeks prior to the event. So if they were calling me within two weeks of the event, everything needed to pay up front um, and then there are accounts out there that will be like a 30-day or 60-day net some of the large corporations and universities but what we have found is over time you can often get people to change those policies and to pay you via credit card rather than going through those other steps but it's you have to be confident in what your policy is for your business and be very direct with what you need so just in some of those cases there you know this is the way they do business and there's no other way around it but then what's interesting is when you ask and say well our policy is that we get paid 100 percent up front to protect our company and to give you the best service possible it's amazing how many people will come up with a credit card that before said that they had to go through some other system so you just have to determine what those policies are for you and that's part of your sales process is know what your sales process is and to stick to that so um, are there any other questions on that other part of the checklist of the client follow-up afterwards, keeping them in the loop and thanking them, and then being able to follow up for them in the future to ask for the sale or the repeat event? Any questions on that part of things? You know, while we're waiting on that, uh, you mentioned something very key about emails going to spam folders. Yes, I am finding that happening more and more and more and more. It is just really hard to get information to leads. And a lot of the sign up forms, the default behavior is to send a thank you email to the customer. But if the customer never gets that email, especially if it's asking for additional information before you can do the quote, then you think that they lost interest, you don't follow up with them. So that lead just gets dropped. So that was a reason why the, the first form, I suggest those three forms of information, one being the phone number. We found that people respond to text messages so much more often, so much quicker. And so if your sign up form system takes a phone number and follows up via text, so you could send an email and then wait two days. And if you don't hear back, it automatically would send them a text, just kind of tapping them on the shoulder, just saying, hey, um, when's a good time we could chat? You'd be surprised how many inbound text messages you'll get from people saying, oh, uh, yeah, I forgot. Two o'clock would be great. So now you know you've got an appointment to call that person at two o'clock because emails just have become so unreliable. So can you tell us a little bit about the text program that you guys have? 
Well, uh, we have an integration agreement with phone.com. So with phone.com, it's about $10 a month and they'll let you send up to 5,000 text messages, which is really insane. Um, so if you integrate that with your CRM, now you can set up your drip campaign to not only drip out emails, but it can also drip out text messages. And those text messages can come right back to your smartphone. So you don't have to consciously be thinking, okay, today, who do I need to follow up with? The system will automatically know that it's been two days and we haven't heard from them. So it's going to send them a text saying something, you know, very basic, like, hey, do you have time to chat today? What's a good time? And then all you know is you get a text that says two o'clock would be a great time. So now you know you've got an appointment to call somebody back and they're waiting for your call at two o'clock. But also to your point, Joette, about the other follow-up processes of actually picking up the phone and making a call, you can also have the drip campaign notify you personally, hey, now's probably a good time to make a personal phone call to the person. So again, automating those processes so you don't have to remember where you're at with all the different leads and all the different stages. Cool. And Mark did put a good point up here that not um, that you have to make sure that you actually have a cell phone for that text program to work. <laughs> that is true, um, but we've found more and more people are using cell phone numbers. Um, and of course, it doesn't hurt to send a, a text message to somebody's home phone or work phone because it's just not going to do anything. Yeah. Um, and so one of the things that you could do is put that in your um, in the form that says cell number versus just phone number as one of the options. Um, and so um, All Pro Web Tools uses phone.com for the texting mm -hmm. part of their program. Yep. You're welcome. All right, so great. Bottom line is, guys, I wanted to come on today, give you a quick overview that um, just gets you thinking about the sales process because um, there's about 110 different things I would love to help encourage you guys to do during this time period. But what I did is I sat down and I thought about what are the most important things that will make people the most efficient and ready to go full force forward when we no longer have to stay at our homes. So here is the thing. If you're organized and you have a system where people can ask you for a quote and you efficiently get that customer service going to get the quote to them and keep them in the loop, then you're going to be able to make more money and pull out less of your hair due to frustration. So I encourage you right now because I've seen it with party people events. Like I said, even though we're all working from home, we go on to Zoom calls and our admin team works and Jonathan's been working with David to, sorry, with Dave to set up party people events for this system. And so it was a really um, tug on my heart of like, hey, I need to share this information with the people in Balloon Coach community and other balloon professionals that may not be putting these systems into place. Also, for those of you who already have a customer management system, I want you to look at how it's currently working for you and have you updated your emails recently about what's going out to people because sometimes we change our address or our phone number or something else and there's just something that we put into a system five years ago and never updated and refreshed it. So look at those email templates that you currently have going out to people and make sure that you update them and freshen them up. Um, if you have other questions about this, Dave, how do they get more information about All Pro Web Tools? What's their next step? Send me a text message, 970-612-1515. So if you can put that up in the chat, if you um, would like more information about his program, give him a text to 970-612-1515. If you have other topics that you would love to see me include over the next couple of weeks, email me joette at ballooncoach.com or send me a private message on Facebook or put it up in a chat in Balloon Coach Community. So I want to do um, one other thing for you guys real quick before you leave. Um, Dave, do you have any other words of wisdom that you would like to help us as we navigate our sales system and try to become as efficient as possible that have excellent customer service? Uh, I would definitely say write out your process so you know kind of what the different steps are in your, when, when you get a lead, I mean, what, what's the first step? What's the second step? What's the third step? 
and you might know it in your head, but what's really nice about having it written down is inevitably your goal is to grow your business, right? To grow your company, which means that you're eventually going to have to hire other people that are going to have to help you. And if you have these processes written down and you know they work, it's a lot easier to hand that written form to someone else and say, here's the steps, just follow those steps. And we know, we know you're going to do well. Um, I've noticed that when you're training people, they really like to have something to fall back on so that they know that they're doing what they've, what's been asked of them. It just helps. I was looking back through the chat and one of the questions came up is about, do you have pricing on your website? And so as a balloon professional, yes, party people events, we have a catalog that has some of our base pricing on it. We're working on updating that currently to get the new sheets up. We also um, have forms that we've made that we can send out to people that has the base pricing on things. Like, so if they tell us that they have a Hollywood theme, we send them that base pricing that they can start with rather than sitting there and trying to reinvent the wheel and create new things every single customer. And I know David Mahoney over a million dollars a year in sales. He has a basic pricing guide on his website at balloonseveryday.com. Um, I know several other balloon professionals, Belinda Barrier in Jacksonville, who's gonna be one of our um, instructors for the Balloon Boss Pro Summit coming up in November. Um, she has extensive catalogs on her website with pricing. And now through Brandon with Balloon Suite, um, we have a lot of um, shopping carts now throughout the industry where it's an actual shopping cart with the pricing, with the colors. So your client can actually go pick out their bouquet or their arch, the exact colors they want and know what that price is. And Balloon Suite and All Pro Web Tools do work together. Um, so Brandon and Dave got to meet each other last year in November at um, our retreat. So I wanted to throw that out for people who do have a Balloon Suite um, website, they are able to integrate their form with all pro web tools. And Dave has integrated with other websites too, correct, Dave? With your yeah, CRM? WordPress, WordPress being the most popular. Yeah, there's a plugin for that. Yeah. So um, just want to let you know those resources are there for you guys. So thank you so much for being a part of this event today. Dave, thanks for your time and giving us information. And um, if you guys are interested, I'm going to be back on at 4 o'clock Eastern today with um, Stephen Mayhew from the Balloon Workshop and talking about some creative ways for us to connect with our customers during this time. So um, Dave, thank you so much for being on. I greatly appreciate it. And again, thanks for the invite, Joe. It was fun. Welcome. Check out allprowebtools.com for extra help. And I am going to stop the recording. And if you need other help with your balloon business, go to ballooncoach.com and check out our mastermind program for ongoing help.